When the Milwaukee Bucks acquired Damian Lillard, many, myself included, thought it was a death sentence for the rest of the league. While things didn't quite work out as planned in year one, for many reasons, I think there's legitimate reason to believe in the Bucks this upcoming season. Doc Rivers is definitely a reason to worry about the Bucks championship potential, believe me, but John Horse may have collected enough talent to overcome that. While being handcuffed to strictly minimum deals, the Bucks made a few quality acquisitions that I believe will make this Bucks squad significantly better. As I said, there's definitely cause for concern with Doc Rivers, but I believe at least having continuity will help the Bucks a lot going into year two with Dame Dalla. Today I'm going to be discussing discussing the Bucks offseason roster and why I believe they will be right back near the top of the Eastern Conference this season. There were many factors that contributed to the Bucks less than satisfactory year one of the Damon Giannis era. Even though injuries did derail their season, it was also apparent prior to those injuries that this was not a true contender. Even with Giannis healthy, the Bucks were reeling to close out the regular season with losses to the likes of the lowly Wizards. Again, there were many factors that contributed to all of this, such as Dame's personal situation, a midseason season coaching change and glaring holes in the roster. While I don't know if the Bucks reach the dominant levels that many of us expected when they acquired Dame Lillard, I think they will be significantly better this upcoming season for a number of reasons. The first of which being continuity, not only with coaching but with players as well. This may seem a bit backwards with how much I think the Bucks new additions will impact, but let me explain. I believe the likes of Gary Trent Jr., DeLon Wright, and Torian Prince will be easy to acclimate, unlike the major changes such as adding Dame as close to the season as they did and changing coaches mid-season. Dame and Giannis actually having a full off-season together will be huge, and Doc Rivers having time to really establish himself will be as well. I don't believe Doc is a great coach, and he could very well be the downfall of this team, but him being familiar with the roster will at the very least make the Bucks better. While the Bucks' playoff run was short-lived, one thing it did reveal was that Chris Middleton has much more left in the tank than many probably thought during his injury riddled past few seasons. For one reason or another, this Bucks team had far too little time to mesh and throw a midseason coaching change in there and you have the situation that was the 2023-24 Milwaukee Bucks. While had the Bucks not had the various continuity issues they would have been better, there were still glaring holes in the roster. At the end of the season, I and pretty much everyone figured that this would be what the Bucks are for the next few years. as being over the cap and second apron basically handcuffed them to minimum deals. Despite this, John Horse worked some magic and made what I believe to be three quality additions all on minimum deals. Gary Trent Jr. is the major one and the craziest one, but before I discuss him, I want to talk about two other underrated additions. First up is DeLon Wright, a great addition to fill the Bucks' most glaring need, point of attack defense. Wright is an excellent defender who can space the floor and also provides some level of ball handling alongside Dane. He finished up last season with Miami. Next up we have Torian Prince. While he is not a perfect player, he is definitely a good addition for a minimum contract player. Lakers fans did complain about Darvin Ham's insistence on playing him, but he will definitely be a solid death piece on a team in need of wings. He can space the floor for your stars and give you some quality minutes. Now we finally make it to one of the biggest shocks of the offseason. Gary Trent Jr. signing to the Bucks on a minimum contract. Various circumstances contributed to Trent having to settle for a minimum deal, but he remains a quality starter and probably the best value contract of the offseason. Bucks fans probably have Dame to thank for this one, as he and Trent were teammates in Portland. Trent is a known sniper who will fit in seamlessly with the Bucks starting lineup. While I do believe the Bucks' new additions will elevate them, None of them will be even the fourth most important piece. The Bucks' core four of Giannis, Dame, Middleton, and Brooke will make or break their season, and I think there's reason to believe at least three of them will be able to perform at a high level. I'll start with Giannis because he's the most straightforward. We know what Giannis will provide at this point, more or less 30, 11, and 6 with elite defense. Giannis is the least questionable of your top four by far, and I see no reason for him to slow down right now. Giannis is a top three player on the planet, and you live and die behind him. Next up, we have Dame. While there is definitely more cause for concern with the 34-year-old Dame than Giannis, I still think Dame can contribute at a very high level and this was shown in the Pacers series last year. He is still only a season removed from averaging over 30 to a night and had a number of factors contributing to his less than satisfactory play throughout last season. Is he at his peak? Of course not, but can he still perform at an all-star level, especially with the defense having to worry about Giannis? I think so. Now for Chris Middleton, and I can't say I wasn't concerned about his future during last season, but I think the Pacers series showed he can still perform at a high level. As a solidified third option, I don't think we see the numbers we have in the past, but the Pacers showed me that when healthy, Chris can at least still be relied upon. Having a real wing scorer will be important in matchups against the best teams in the East, and I think Chris Middleton is still that. The last member of the Milwaukee Core 4 is Brooke Lopez, and the 36-year-old, 
finally showed some real signs of slowing down this past season. There were a ton of rumors surrounding him possibly being moved, but as a believer in floor spacing, I don't know if outside of moving Giannis to center, there was a better option present. I say this to say, despite his defensive decline, Brook is still a stretch big who must be respected, and I think how much this opens the game up for Giannis is ignored at time. If you can acquire another quality stretch big in his place or you decide on moving Giannis to center, I think you can and should explore options, but I think putting an interior big next to Giannis may be a disaster, especially considering the coaching situation. While I do believe the Bucks will be better due to Doc establishing himself, and he has shown ability to win in the regular season, as a former Doc Rivers victim, I feel obligated to discuss this. Doc's lack of offensive creativity and tendency to just hope his star talent bails him out has been his downfall since winning in Boston, and I don't see that changing now. Another aspect of the Doc Rivers experience that I know Milwaukee has already gone through is his unwillingness to play young guys. The likes of Andre Jackson and Marjan Bochamp could potentially become at least rotation players, but until he has no other choice, you likely won't really be able to find out. As I said, I think that should things go well, there is potentially enough talent to overcome Doc Rivers, but with the competition in the Eastern Conference, I'm not all that sure. I think this team will be infinitely better in the regular season, but come playoff time, the coaching disadvantage against pretty much every Eastern Conference contender could be costly. Doc was brought in as a respected veteran voice to bring stability, and that he will, but come playoff time, it could get ugly as it often has with Doc over the past decade or so. As for the remainder of the roster, I understand why many Bucks fans wanted Bobby Portis traded, but I believe he can still be a good bench contributor. Pat Connaughton is fine, I guess, really just like an average wing who can give you some decent minutes. AJ Green is a sniper and floor spacer that could provide value. I think Andre Jackson Jr. has some level of potential, as I said, but he is at the mercy of Doc Rivers. Similar situation with Marjan Bochamp. As for the draft selection of AJ Johnson, I'd bet he spent some time in the G League and was more of an upside swing. The pick could be rewarding down the line, but there is no way in hell Doc Rivers plays him this year and I honestly don't know if I could blame him for that at this point. While the Bucks still have a bit of a depth issue and a coaching disadvantage against all of their real competition, I still think this is a very good team. Holes in the roster following the Dame trade were patched up pretty well and as I said I think we see a significantly better team versus last season. They are not without flaws but they are in a significantly better place than anyone could have imagined in April and there's something to be said for that. That's going to wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up, sub the channel, hit that noti bell, comment down below, you know, what do you think is the potential for this Bucks team? Again, you have a guy like Giannis, you know, you're going into most series with the best player on the court, Dame. Again, right? I think the talent is there. You know, again, they patched up holes pretty well. Is it a flawless roster? No, but I think their biggest concern right now is Doc Rivers and that that, that could be a real problem. But yeah, that's going to wrap this one up. Once again, if y'all could like the video, sub the channel. I would really, really appreciate it. Would help me out a ton. We are on the road to 5K. And I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.